Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm actually going to start on one of my personal crew cabs and get going on uh, some crew cab for me to drive. So uh, let's go dig into it and show you guys what we're doing. Well guys, this is my 1972 F-250 crew cab. I uh, picked this up about a year ago now. Uh, had plans with it, uh, but you know, uh, projects that I already had going on, we had to finish those and get going on those. But right now we're just waiting on body shop and uh, that seems to be taking the most time for everything I'm doing, unfortunately. So my plans for this one is to fix uh, all the rust underneath it in all of those areas so I can get this thing to, to the body shop and get going on it uh, ASAP so it can get finished up. Now I'm not doing like a Concor restoration on this truck, so hopefully it will uh, take a little bit uh, less time than the other ones we're doing. But right now I have it uh, pulled around to the, the shop here and we're gonna do do some cleaning i want to i want to clean all this stuff off it's all kind of grimy and green uh greasy uh clean all this stuff off uh while i got it out here where i can get it with the pressure washer before we get it rolled in the shop and start cutting on it uh the the everything on the front clip unfortunately is pretty much junk uh the grill is in uh decent shape but uh, not good enough i'm gonna put a uh, early style grill on it anyway but uh the fenders are junk the inner fenders are junk the hood's junk unfortunately i do have a new hood you can get fenders and all the other pieces so uh you can actually get new hoods now but uh, i do have good original hoods i can use see it's just you could fix that but i'm just not gonna mess with that uh we do have to do cab mounts and uh floors on the front you can give give you a look here cab mounts are pretty shot uh the roof is pretty good there's some spots right here that are concerning to me uh, that's another reason I wanted to get going on this project because it's sitting outside and I don't want this stuff to get worse. So we're going to have to uh, uh, see how that rust looks under there. Hopefully we don't have to replace everything under here, but uh, we'll see about that when we get it all apart. There is some stuff in the rockers here. I'm going to see uh, how hard that is going to be to replace. Uh, if I can just cut this piece out right here and replace it, hopefully that's what I can do. Uh, the support brace that goes on the floor is bad as well. Uh, floor pans obviously need to be replaced. The rear is in good shape. So everything in the rear is good. So that's good because uh, you can't get replacement panels for that. You just have to make them. But uh, all that is good to go. There is a little bit in the doors, uh, but I think I'm going to let the body shop do that because that's on the outside and that's kind of, I like to let them do that so they don't have to, all the stuff that I screw up, they don't have to fix all that. A little bit of ding here also they're gonna have to work on the cab corners i think i'm going to replace uh just because they're in the back of the cab and if i screw something up it's not that big of a deal this has actually been bondoed over you can see how thick that is they just smeared a bunch of bondo over this so there's probably rust rust holes all through that so i'll have to replace all that and it goes around the corner here but uh that's that's my plans for this one so we have to strip all the interior out so i can get access to all that and uh, unfortunately, if you remember on the uh, on this truck, the videos I've made on it in the past, the frame is uh, pretty bad on it. It has the uh, double frame section here. A lot of the crew cabs have, and uh, it's just just it broke welds from this thing popping off from all the rust and flaking off in the inside. So unfortunately, the uh, the frame is going to be really thin here. I mean, you could probably cut this off, and you'd have to replace a bunch of the frame to save this frame. Um, I'm actually planning on doing uh, some towing and some other stuff with this truck So I want a uh, solid frame that I can rely on so we're doing the frame swap with this with a 97 f-350 frame So uh, we don't have to worry about that uh, I like to keep the original frames when I can but something like this It's just gonna be way too much work to mess with keeping that original frame But what I am gonna do uh, uh, The VIN number on these things is on the frame I'm going to cut the frames right there's the van right there. I'm going to cut this section of the frame out and weld it on top of the other frame. Uh, not doing that to try to be sneaky or anything. I'm just doing that to verify that I did have the correct frame for this, you know, the, the VIN number and everything just so that stays with the truck. And uh, 
uh, it's, it, you're never going to have a problem with that normally because uh, if anybody inspects it, they just go off the, the VIN number on the door. But this, this is technically for warranty purposes only. So the official VIN number is on the frame. We also have this tag here, which the VIN uh, is supposed to be on this. You can't see. Oh, there it is. Yeah, you can see it. It's right there. And then they had uh, uh, some markings here that you can't read anymore. But uh, So I do have this as well that helps, helps out. So I'm going to keep that on the truck. On the interior, um, I wasn't really planning on painting the interior because I think it would clean up nice. There are some spots that I might touch up. But uh, we'll see how it looks once I get it cleaned up. But anyway, guys, I'm going to get going on uh, getting this thing pressure washed off and cleaned off. And then we'll get it in the shop and we'll get it working on pulling the cab so we can repair those rust places. So I'm going to get after it. Well, guys, I got it all kind of cleaned off. Uh, a lot of this stuff on the interior here or under the hood any, anyway. This stuff didn't clean up too good. So uh, I'm hoping that uh, once I get the front end all tore apart, I'll come in here with some... Uh, uh, some power tools and some uh, cleaners and everything and try to uh, clean up that firewall a little bit uh, I mean, I kind of don't want to just paint do a whole paint job on everything But we might repaint the firewall just because that doesn't look very good, but uh, trying not to get too uh, Picky with this truck because then I'll it'll be uh, forever and a day before I get it done uh, and I actually had an idea of just kind of uh, leaving it the way it is and enjoying it as is uh, kind of like what I did on the ultimate high boy because that truck uh, paint and body wise is not perfect it uh, didn't have any rust in it so I guess that helps this one does have rust in the bottom of the doors down there and that fender is starting to rust out and stuff uh, but we don't have any major holes we just have rust spots so uh, 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 we do have some stuff up here in the uh, roof line that needs to be addressed uh, so this stuff would definitely need to be uh, uh, sanded down and neutralized and then uh, uh, sealed up because uh, I don't want to have perforated roof panel here and have to replace all this and we have a hole back here we have to patch but uh, I don't know I mean it's it's kind of very borderline to me you know it's there's stuff I don't like about it that I'd want to just repaint the whole thing but then there's also like this right here this bugs me from the door being mis misaligned and there's dents right here and uh, that stuff right there is pretty unsightly but we do have everything that matches I guess uh, you know the hood isn't terrible it, I mean it has big problems but you can't see this from the outside so I don't know how how picky I'm gonna be I think I would uh, I would prefer it to be painted and redone and fixed all the little stuff but uh, man that just takes so long I have we have three trucks in paint right now and we're just waiting it's just a waiting game waiting on them to get back and I hate hate to be sitting on this truck ready to go and uh, spend a year waiting on paint I might try to find a uh, different body shop or something that uh, can get it done a little bit faster I might pay an extra premium for getting it done but uh, I kind of want it done I want this truck uh, any year I would like to have it done another thing up in here the uh, the roof panel has uh, hail dents in it so unfortunately there's a lot of a little bitty dents in this thing which is probably not going to be fun to fix they are not terrible uh, I don't know if you can do some PDR on that some uh, paintless dent repair but uh, they are there but when this thing is uh, a high boy stance up higher you're not even going to be able to see that so I guess we have that going for us anyway I think my first order of business with this truck is I'm going to clean the interior out it's got a whole bunch of trash and junk in it and and uh, pull the seats out pull the carpet out and uh, everything on the uh, the floor and I'll take it back out before I pull it off the frame and I'll take it back out and uh, try to clean the interior as best I can since I'm going to be uh, replacing the floor pans and all that stuff try to get uh, not have to deal with as much uh, grimy interior gunk it's in there so uh, I'm gonna get to work cleaning this thing out and uh, getting the seats pulled out and that carpet it actually has has a carpet and then it has the rubber floor mat underneath the carpet so i'm hoping that the rear floor or the rear carpet is uh, the rubber mat is in good shape because you can't reproduce you don't they don't reproduce those although i am thinking about push, putting red carpet in this because uh the vinyl floor mats you get aftermarket just fit absolutely horrible i don't know why we can't get uh, floor mats that fit 
So uh, the, the carpet seems to do a little bit better. So I'm, I'm thinking about just putting red carpet in this because I'm keeping the red trim accents and uh, red seats. So uh, red carpet might uh, be a good touch, but it also would be a lot of red. But uh, anyway, guys, I'm going to get after uh, cleaning this thing out and I'll fill you guys in when I get a little further along. Well, guys, I got the rear seat out. And uh, I've mentioned it before on this truck, but I thought I'd point it out again. We do have the uh, the build sheet on the back of the seat. So that is, uh, I like seeing that. Uh, the original seat, this original seat to the truck uh, has never been recovered. And down here it says six man crew. So that is the original build sheet for the truck. And uh, like I was hoping, we have the nice uh, floor mat here. So uh, the the rear floor mat for the crew cab is intact, and it is in excellent shape. I got it had old carpet in here, and I got that pulled out and uh, cleaned it up a little bit. And uh, I really like seeing that because this is not reproduced. It would be awful easy to remake, I guess, because it's it's kind of flat. But uh, a nice original one, I like seeing that. We have actually found a build sheet under this before on another crew cab. So. I'm going to be real careful taking this out because they can be uh, awful fragile, but uh, there might be another build sheet glued to the floor there, but uh, we'll see when we get this out. So I'm going to get this out because the uh, the bolts for the front seat are under the, the uh, floor mat there. So instead of trying to pull that up and tear that, I'm going to get this yanked out and then uh, get, those, get those bolts out. So I'm going to get after that and uh, see what we find underneath this mat. Well guys, I got the uh, interior all cleaned out. I thought the uh, the rear actually looks very nice, uh, considering. Uh, so the uh, the rear floor panel is in all in good shape. No rust repair on the rear crew cab floor panel, and even the steps down here that like to rot out. There's no uh, no rust repair needed down here too. So that I like seeing that. Of course, I already knew about this because you can see that. But uh, cut the floor mat and everything, pull out of here, and it looks really nice. Unfortunately, it did not have a build sheet on the on the. Uh, cab right here. I don't know why that one truck we had had that. Uh, that's the only truck I've ever seen that had that uh, build sheet under the floor mat there. But uh, this one did not have it. It's never been up before. But uh, if it was in there, it would still be in there. So it must not have been put in there. But uh, we didn't have it on this one. But uh, anyway, the uh, the rear floor panel you can see here. This is where they welded it together. It's all in good shape. Although the front up here is where we got the issues, although it's really not that bad, uh, you know, compared to a lot of trucks. So I can't complain, and even some of the crew cabs I've got here recently. Uh, you know, floor pan obviously and the cab mounts aren't any good. Uh, a little bit in here in the cab, I'm going to have to replace this right here where the, uh, uh, the uh, windows, not window seals, the door seals go. It kind of rotted out, the same thing over there, it did it over there as well. Rust over there, so... Uh, that is uh, first up on my list of things to do is to cut out the floor pans and put new floor pans in it and new cab mounts. And uh, uh, the, the bracing that goes under here is rotted out. And there's a few spots, like right there, there's a little bit of rust showing through. So I'm going to try to cut out these parts of the rockers and fix that so we don't have any rust showing through in the rockers. But uh, while I was cleaning out, I found some more goodies in here. This stuff here I already found uh, when I bought the truck about a year ago. So I already knew about all this stuff. You know, we got the Pepsi can, the uh, the uh, Happy Meals box. So uh, all that stuff I already found. But this stuff here was a little bit more interesting, I thought. It was all hidden under the seats. Uh, this truck came from Russell, Kansas. Uh, well, it's not where I got it. I got it from Salina, Kansas. But uh, they got it from somebody in Russell, Kansas. And going off the... Uh, uh, the records in the glove box, all the registration and everything, it was in Russell, Kansas for a long time uh, and going off of this because uh, uh, I even looked on Google Street View and looking at historical uh, images on Street View, looking up the address, I actually found a picture of this truck in a lot in 2013 in Russell, Kansas. So uh, the guys I got it from, they couldn't quite remember when they got it. I think they told me 2012 or 2013, something around there. So, so that image in 2013, it was at least there then. Uh, so uh, this right here is uh, 1981. The uh, in Russell, Kansas, the football schedule and the uh, basketball schedule here on this keychain. So it was at least there in 1981. And right here is a couple of tickets for the Skyview Drive-In Movie Theater in Russell, Kansas. There's not a date on them, unfortunately, or like what they're going to go see. 
but it did cost them two dollars and seventy five cents for a uh, per ticket here's a book of matches from uh, pizza inn it's pretty old looking thought that was pretty neat uh, this nickel here is a 1941 nickel that's why I saved that looked pretty neat this tag here 39 uh, might try to clean that up and use it as a keychain on the truck when I get it running uh, a couple of shells nothing exciting there this one just says browning I thought that was pretty cool duck and pheasant load uh, some aluminum 357 mag CCI uh, casings and uh, gasket sealer here this thing was leaking and made a mess but uh, old gasket sealer bottle this right here though was awful interesting it was up under the the uh, driver's seat bracket way up under there so uh, it's been there a long time and the date on it is 1974 so this truck was only two years old when this ticket was made this is for fuel and I think this is the original owner uh, the original owner being two years old and uh, the story I was told was this was an oil field truck some kind of uh, oil field service company had it and right here the customer is called Miller testing company which uh, they might have been doing things like testing wells or testing pipe or something of that nature. So uh, that's kind of what made you think this is from the original owner. But this was in uh, Stanford, Texas, Stanford, Kansas, sorry. And uh, this was sold new in Great Bend, which this is just probably 10, 20 miles from Great Bend. So that kind of checks out too. I don't know where it originally was housed, you know, if it was in Great Bend or somewhere, somewhere else, but this is for fuel thought it was interesting they got 15 gallons the price was 53 cents and uh, the total was eight dollars and ten cents for for filling the truck up so i kind of wish we could do that today but uh, those days are long gone unfortunately so uh, that was pretty neat anyway i just want to show you all that stuff i found so uh, next up i'm going to get the truck uh get the cab ready to pull and i get up here on the lift and pull the cab up and uh see about doing that rust repair so i'm going to get after it well guys, I got the cab pulled off the frame over here. It uh, didn't go too bad. Uh, really helped that there's no engine transmission, all the radiators, nothing's in it here. So uh, all this stuff here was easy to disconnect. Uh, and even the, the front cab mounts, I didn't even undo those because uh, they're so rusted. I just pulled them up and they just broke apart. So uh, that was another step I didn't have to do. So really it was, it was uh, pretty easy about... Uh, about 30 minutes of work and had the cab off of here but uh I, on the front end um uh, i have the uh, the lift only on the cab portion because i'm going to try to pull the uh, front clip off all in one piece uh we've done it in the past uh i haven't done it in uh recent times but uh, have in the past uh pulled the front clip off all in one piece so we're gonna have to uh undo the bolts here on the uh, front supports and all the bolts that hold the fender on and i'm gonna try to pull Pull the front clip off all in one piece just so it's all together and not just strung out in parts that I have to put somewhere because uh, none of this, we're going to be using any of this. Uh, the only piece that's really salvageable is this upper valence here maybe. Uh, that piece is probably usable. The lower stone deflector, I guess you could use it if you needed to. Uh, you can buy that piece new so if there's much wrong with it, you know, you're better off just buying a new piece which that one's kind of dinged up. I guess you could probably make it work but... Uh, I guess it's pretty dinged up right there. So anyway, what I'm trying to say is I'm just going to pull this off one piece and go set it off back in the parts pile. And if I need some parts and bit, bits and pieces, we'll, we'll pull them off it uh, when I need it at that time. And once I get the front clip pulled off, it'll be a lot easier to work on the cab mounts and the, uh, the floor pans. But once I get the front clip off, I want to set this cab on my, uh, my uh, chassis cart and uh, my dolly thing. And I'll roll it outside and steam clean the underside a lot better because it'll be... A lot nicer to work on stuff when it's not all grimy and greasy. I thought I'd uh, point it out before I pull, pull this frame out of here. Uh, just why we're not using this frame. And mainly it's this section right here is the worst of it. See how bad uh, that's flaking apart. It's it's uh, flaked off so much that it's pushed the, uh, the strengthening plate out of the frame. And uh, if you cut this plate off of here and... Uh, worked on it uh, and cleaned it all up this the frame would actually be really thin I bet uh, and I just don't feel comfortable using that without replacing all of that and and if you replaced all that frame section man that'd be a lot of work for uh, for an old two-wheel drive frame you know if this was a four-wheel drive truck that'd be a different story but since this is just an old uh, standard f-250 two-wheel drive that's why we're doing the chassis swap on this thing 
So uh, we'll get a nice, a uh, lot nicer chassis in it, put, putting an F-350 chassis on it from 97. So it'll be a pretty stout chassis. And uh, we'll have Dana 60 in the, in the front. And uh, Sterling 10 and a quarter in the rear. So uh, anyway, guys, I'm going to get through uh, tearing this thing apart, cleaning all this stuff up. And uh, hopefully we'll be doing, doing some rust repair on this thing soon. So I'll fill you guys in when we get that done. Well, I got the front end off. It was actually uh, fairly easy. Once I got the uh, the bolts out for the fender right here and down here, uh, and then you had to get the uh, apron bolts out for the fender aprons right here, and it was kind of, I had the front end supported up, and the cab was a lot lower, and uh, then kind of just worked one side off and went over and worked the other side off, and it's actually a lot lighter than you think it is. Uh, so it's I did it by myself. It's not too bad. So since all of that's out of there, uh, I did unfortunately find some bad news because uh, this area right here is covered up by the fender. So you can see the stuff with the undercoating that's in the fender well and I didn't really look up in here. But uh, when I got the front clip off, I unfortunately found quite a bit of rust in the firewall area here. Uh, this is not as common of a spot for rust for me anyway. Uh, I've seen them rust down here because this, this area catches a lot of uh, leaves and debris from the cow vents up here. Um, but I mean, none of mine are rusted out like that, but I've seen it before. This right here, I haven't seen as much, and uh, definitely nothing I have is rusted out like this uh, around here in my area. But uh, this truck was up in uh, north, kind of uh, northwest Kansas on I-70 area, Russell, Kansas, and uh, they probably use a ton of salt up there because Kansas uses a ton anyway. Uh, you cross the state line, it seems like all the all everything's rusted out in Kansas. Uh, in Oklahoma, we don't use that much, but uh, that's probably what did this here. Road spray from the tire up here, getting caught up in here, and uh, getting under this undercoating, probably rusted all this way. So, unfortunately, I'm gonna be doing a lot more rust repair up here than I thought I was. Over here on the driver's side, it's still uh, not great. It's not as bad, but it still needs needs some attention. So looks like I'm going to be doing that. Uh, you get, get a better shot of the cab mounts down here. You know, that's why I didn't even unbolt them because they're just gone. So all those are getting replaced as long as the floor pans. And uh, here's the cab braces. I don't know why these things are so dang expensive, the replacement ones, but uh, they are. And... Uh, get these things cut out of there, new pieces replaced. I have to replace some of the rockers, but uh, I think I'm using some of my parts cabs for those pieces so I can cut cut uh, good pieces out of some junk cabs we have that uh, the rockers are in good shape and uh, replace pieces, the bits and pieces on the rockers. The rockers are actually in pretty good shape. They're just a little bitty pieces like this one here. Uh, it's thin right there, I have to replace that, but stuff like that's not a big deal. That right there, I'm really not looking forward to. You can buy this whole firewall, but I think that would be a bit, uh, I don't know, it seems like that would be a lot of work just to fix these two areas. And I know our, our parts cabs have good firewalls in them. So I'm thinking uh, I'm going to cut, you know, cut around here. And I'm replacing all of this because uh, we're doing the cab mount. So I might be able to just cut all this when I have all this apart and just redo all of this. And uh, this right here, I don't think I can save this seam. We'll see how it, how it is when I cut it apart because there's two pieces seamed together here. So if I have to replace the seam and part of this piece, it's going to add a lot more to it. But I guess once I have all this cut apart, I'll be able to cut this out easy and replace it. So we'll just have to, I'm going to work my way through it. I am definitely not a professional rust repair guy. I'm not even like an amateur rust repair guy. I'm just a beginner because I've only done done a couple of things on a few trucks i really don't have to do a lot of rust repair on the trucks i normally get so uh these crew cabs here i'm gonna have to learn because uh you can take what you get on the crew cabs we do have one rust free crew cab that's 67 but i'm saving that for a different project so uh, i guess i get to cut my teeth on this guy and do a lot i know some of you guys are probably thinking it's not very much but anyway guys i'm gonna get this thing off of off of the lift here and on the cart so i can start doing that rust repair stuff uh, so because one thing about the lift you can't really get in the cab very good because uh, the doors hit the post and everything So doing those floor pans and stuff. It's going to be in the way I, I like it to be on the lift for doing this stuff here because it's uh, Up up where you can get to it easy, but I think on my uh, on my cart deal I'm gonna balk the cab up a little bit higher So it's working a little bit higher up But anyway guys, I'm gonna get after that and get a game plan together and uh, we'll check back with you guys later once I get something figured out 
Well guys, I got the cab set down on my uh, little chassis table thing there with some wheels on it so I can roll it around and I have it blocked up a little bit so it's a little bit uh, higher up and easier to work on. Uh, and this little spot right here has caused all sorts of issues. Uh, well, I wouldn't really say issues, I guess. Let's just say conundrum. Uh, whenever I saw this, it was kind of discouraging because I didn't, I wasn't planning on having to deal with all of this area. You know, I was just planning on uh, cab mounts, floors, and a little bit of rocker work. But uh, whenever, whenever I found this, you know, this is, uh, it may not look bad, but it's pretty significant. Even up here, it's rusted out where this, where this, uh, oh, this is the firewall pad. It goes through the hole there. And uh, this seam right here is all bubbled up and rusted. So if you're going to do it right, all of this has to come out. And uh, that seam there is kind of a hard hard place to fix it's not just like a flat panel like this you know you have that seam that goes in the cab in there anyway so looking at all this and kind of just sitting here and trying to figure out what i want to do i came up with the idea of just replacing the whole cowl firewall dash assembly on this with a uh, rust-free regular cab shell i have um on the a uh, few episodes back, uh, several months ago, uh, working on my forestry service truck, we did rust repair on a cab. If you remember, that truck came with another cab, uh, but it had some issues with it that I wasn't exactly happy with. Uh, some uh, prior repair that has been done in the back and the roof and stuff. And uh, so we didn't end up using that, and we used another cab I have for that project. Well, I still have that shell. It's just a bare shell. It's already been sandblasted and everything, and everything's rust-free. So I had the idea... Of I'll just cut the A pillar here, and uh, not sure how where I do it here, but probably in the seam right here where the crew cab section was was done. I would cut along here and pull all of this out, so I would get all the the support braces for the cab cab floor. All that would be gone. The rust areas here on the uh, the door seals, the floor, the cab mounts, all the firewall rust and everything. And I think there's a little bit of rust in the uh, window tr track right here. So uh, all of that would be gone and taken care of, and uh, I would splice in that new uh, new dash and firewall and cowl assembly off that rust-free cab, and uh, then we'd only have to deal with this right here, which is already a weld seam, and this will be under the floor mat, so I won't have to worry about messing up any bodywork or anything like that. And then right here on the A-pillar, we'd have a, a weld seam here. So uh, a lot less uh, welding. There'd be a lot of uh, figuring and, and uh, making sure everything fits nice and is going together correctly because if you mess up your geometry in the door and your window and stuff, that's really going to be a bad day when you try to fit everything back together. But uh, anyway, that's kind of what I came up with. But uh, then I got to thinking of uh, some other things that uh, could... Well, well, my mind started going with uh, a power stroke swap with cutting the firewall out and then uh, decided against that just because uh, I really like the originality of these trucks and like to keep them original. But uh, my original plan with this truck is to go with the 7.3 uh, Godzilla engine and the uh, new 10-speed uh, Super Duty transmission. Uh, Ford, Ford finally came out with their control pack for that, which controls the transmission and engine. So I got really excited about that and... Uh, Started getting some plans together with some engines and stuff, seeing what the engines are going to cost, found the control pack, what the control pack's going to cost, and uh, the, another big one is the transmission. That 10R140 transmission is kind of hard to find, and when you do find one, they're very expensive. So uh, all said and done, I added all the total up and everything, even trying to find the best deals I can, even looking in junkyards and uh, finding takeout 7.3s and stuff, it's still going to cost about... Uh, fourteen to fifteen thousand to run that setup, so that was kind of a big blow. You know, uh, I guess for what you get, you're getting a brand new engine, and uh, you know the transmission is going to be low miles because it's takeout. But still, that's a big blow to a project like this, especially when I still have to do paint and uh, body work on it. So then I got to thinking other ideas. Uh, I'm I'm uh, I'm a big fan of six liters. I've, I've worked on six liters for many, many years. I've uh, built hot rod six liters. We even had the uh, world's fastest uh, power stroke for several years with a six liter powered Ranger. So I'm very familiar with six liters, know how to make them run, know how to make power out of them. So I thought, well, maybe a six liter uh, in this thing with maybe some compound turbos, you know, something like six, 700, 800 horsepower, or something like that would be pretty fun in this truck. But the six liters, there is a problem with uh, the firewall clearance on those. So if you're not cutting the firewall out, they're, they're pretty hard to fit in there. 
Uh, my brother's actually doing a 75 super cab we have in the shop right now, and I'm kind of helping him with that. I fabricated a turbo kit for it and uh, uh, downpipe, and uh, we didn't want to cut the firewall on it because he's kind of the same way as me. You know, we don't want don't want to lose the originality of the cab and everything. And uh, we made it work, but it, man, it's tight. It's very, very tight, and the cab is picked up just a little bit to give us some more clearance. So kind of lost interest in the 6-liter idea just because I didn't want to have to deal with all that on this truck. And uh, then I also thought about the 6.7. I have a 6.7 here with a chassis and transmission all ready to go. The, the engine actually has 5,000 miles on it. Uh, you guys might remember that if you're a uh, long-time viewer of the channel. Way back, uh, the crew hauler project, uh, that project I started on, we did the ambulance, pulled an ambulance apart and uh, got the chassis ready and I uh, was going to do a uh, crew cab swap on that. And uh, uh, the reason I haven't really, a lot of guys have been asking about it, so the reason I really haven't been working on it much is because the whole, the original plan with that truck was to swap out the Super Duty dash and firewall and all that and cut out the the factory stuff just so the the six sevens all happy and uh also to make the truck more uh, road trip friendly really long trips uh, have all the creature comforts of that new truck in the old truck shell basically and uh, try to keep it uh, as super duty as possible so you, you don't lose the uh the posh driving experience of a modern vehicle and uh, i just couldn't get behind putting that older dash or the newer dash in the old truck uh, mainly because that truck's already 10 years old and uh, the 67 and uh, in another 10 years what is that dash going to look like you know I, I, the when I look back at older trucks that have done that you know people that put like 90s dashes in these trucks before uh, I've always thought that looked pretty tacky and it, back in the day when they did that it was probably cool but now it's kind of like Ugh, you know, it, I, I wish they would have left the original stuff so that's what kind of stopped me stopped that project dead in the tracks because then you know to if i if i left the original dash in that truck and everything it kind of ruins the uh the whole aspect of the crew hauler aspect of that truck which was supposed to be uh long hauls uh going long trips and stuff with that truck being able to tow a, a big load for long distances and everything so uh that's kind of why that project got put on the back burner i just kind of lost interest in it uh it's kind of a big problem with projects you know you get real excited and you get started on it then you kind of lose interest and you get other projects and you get more excited about those and the first projects get kind of on the wayside anyway i'm kind of rambling so then i was thinking six seven use that six seven on this project and i would uh since this one's not going to be that long haul uh crew hauler type build it's just going to be a uh i mean it's still going to be i could get in and drive it a long distance but i'm not it's not necessarily the truck i would take if i have to go to california today you know what i mean so on a 6.7, I think I can keep the uh, the engine and transmission. Uh, I can fit it in here with uh, the factory firewall. I have test fitted it before, very roughly. I had a cab on a lift, and I rolled my chassis up in here, set the cab down, and there there was some fuel lines that were right here that were in the way, and the downpipe was in the way. So I couldn't exactly get it where I needed it to, but it looked like if I moved those things, I could move it up. The uh, six seven is very compact back here, where the six liter has up pipes that are that stick way up back in here. Anyway, so uh, I think I can do it with the factory firewall and factory dash. And I know people who have done uh, standalone uh, controlling with the uh, six seven power stroke. We don't have to have the dash and everything in here. So I can probably do something like a Dakota digital dash in here or something like that if I go that route. Uh, we might have to do some modifications in the floor here for the back of the transmission and the transfer case Specifically the uh, floor brace that goes along here. It kind of sticks down I'll probably have to trim that and add some more bracing in there. So it gives clearance for the back of the transmission back here, but uh, Yeah, that's kind of the plan right now uh, very very loose plan uh, Right now, I think I'm going to get my frame back in here and try to get a try to take those pieces off there in a way and get a, a better idea if I think I can fit that engine without uh, modifying the firewall. And if I can, that might be the direction we go. So, uh, uh, I think it would turn out very nice. I mean, I really wanted to do the uh, Godzilla with the 10 speed, but man, that price tag just hard to swallow. Uh, and uh, the 6.7 is going to have more power than that uh, just starting off you know and i'll probably modify it and have even more power so you know it's going to have over a thousand foot pounds of torque so to get that out of that 7.3 it's going to be 
lots, even lots, lots, lots of more money. But uh, anyway, guys, let me know down in the comments what you think. Um, kind of those three options was the ones I came up with. Uh, I'm not really a Cummins guy. I'm a Power Stroke guy. So Cummins wasn't really an option to begin with. So uh, six liter Power Stroke uh, was, you know, kind of my, or seven, seven, three Godzilla was kind of my first option. Six liter Power Stroke, hopped up six liter Power Stroke was my second option. And now it's uh, six, seven Power Stroke is what I'm kind of thinking. But uh, anyway, guys, let me know down in the comments what you think about that. I'm going to work on getting that frame over here and see if we can get some test fits on it. And uh, maybe we'll have a decision by the end of the episode, but uh, maybe not. So uh, let me know in the comments what you guys think, and I'll start working on that frame. Okay, well, I have my uh, F450 chassis rolled in the shop here with the 6.7, uh, doing uh, test fitting the engine again just to make double sure that I can uh, do this without modifying the firewall before I go into the, all the trouble of cutting all this firewall and fixing it and then turning out uh, I can't I can't absolutely make it make it fit with the factory firewall. So that's what I'm doing here today. I've already done this, and uh, I think we came close. And I if I remember right, these fuel lines were in the way. They go up here. Uh, kind of more like this and they're kind of more in the way so I just have them pulled off and out of the way for now these will be easy to reroute if uh, turns out we can make it work and I believe the downpipe was interfering right here with the uh, pinch weld up here on the cab so I'm going to take the downpipe off to get it in here just to see what we're working with with room and uh, we'll get this cab set down on here and uh, see how it goes Okay, well, I have the cab set down on the frame. Uh, things actually went uh, a lot better than I thought. Here I see I have the, uh, those fuel lines out of the way. They were getting in the way down there. And uh, also have that uh, downpipe out. There's the uh, factory downpipe. And uh, you can see where the clearance issues would be right here. Uh, looks like there's room to snake one down in there. But uh, in... in, in uh, first glance it looks like this thing fits perfect you know the the up pipes and everything there have clearance for the turbo it also helps that this engine has the uh, reverse flow heads so the exhaust goes at the top and the intakes are actually down here this is the intakes to the head so the exhaust is all up here in the top so it doesn't have pipes coming up here and getting in the way of uh, the firewall there like the uh, earlier diesels do but uh, we aren't back far enough sadly I thought everything was going great I took measurements and I thought man that's gonna that's gonna be perfect and I went and got a fender and uh, it's gonna be really hard for me to show you with a camera in one hand but if you can see there the tire is about two inches one and a half inches too far forward still so it still has to move back and there is absolutely no more room so Without firewall modifications, it is not going to work, sadly. Um, it is it is very, very close. Uh, I'm going to do some more looking just to make sure. But uh, right now, I don't think it's going to work because we need all that room up here for the radiator stack for this big engine to keep this big engine cool. So so uh, where I thought I was going to get away easy and this is all going to fit and I'll make up my mind and have a decision made, it's uh, still complicated, unfortunately. But... I do have a solution maybe in mind. I wasn't planning on using this frame anyway for this project because this is for the uh, crew hauler project and I'm probably still going to uh, do something with this with that project. I may not be keeping it. Uh, it may be a build to sell thing. So uh, I might be putting something like a Cummins in here or something. Uh, um, I'm not a big fan of the Cummins, but a lot of people are. So if I'm building it to sell it, I might put a Cummins in it or something to uh, uh, make it simpler for a swap and make everything fit a little bit better. And uh, keep this 6.7 engine for one of my builds since I'm a big fan of this engine. But uh, for now, I'm thinking maybe I will still use the OBS frame like I was originally planning on using for this build with the uh, Godzilla engine. Uh, using that 97F350 OBS frame and mounting the 6.7 in that frame. And then I can move the engine where it fits perfectly like this. I can mount it like this and then have the axle a little bit farther back. We're going to lose some room up here for the radiators. So... Um, that might be some uh, issues we'll run into, but uh, for now I'm going to uh, move forward with that idea. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and move forward with the rust repair, repair on the cab because uh, uh, first first and foremost we need to get the, uh, the cab taken care of 
and all the rust uh, fixed up so we can start mounting that on the uh, chassis, whatever chassis I ended up using. And then this can go get painted while I'm uh, restoring the chassis. Uh, that's my plan anyway. So uh, anyway, guys, this episode is going to be way too long if I keep talking. Let me know in the comments down below what you think I should do. Godzilla 6 liter power stroke compounded or this 6.7 power stroke in something, whatever I get it to fit in. But uh, anyway, guys, let me know down in the comments what you think. Subscribe if you want to see more on this build. Like this video if you like this truck. I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching, guys.